Now, Jerry Lawson, who was he? Well, he was known as the father of modern gaming. If you grew up in the era that I did, where you had the little cartridges, maybe it was, um, oh, my favorite, Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers, a Donkey Kong, and then you switch that out and you had an Atari set. You have Gerald Lawson to thank. He's the one that came up with the concept of instead of just having the games all built in that you could switch them out. He was the person that did that. He developed the cartridge so people could keep buying cartridges. He was the genesis of that. Now he was born in Brooklyn, December 1st, 1940. His dad was a longshoreman, became a postal uh, worker as well, but his grandfather was a physicist. His father had an interest in science, but he never pursued it. But his parents pushed him to develop this love of science and he had scientific hobbies. He uh, would build radios. He was into chemistry. Uh, it was said that his first grade teacher helped encourage him on this path uh, and was someone similar, they thought, to George Washington Carver. He had that much interest in science at a young age. At the age of 13, he earned an amateur ham radio license. I mean, think about that, 13 years old. After receiving a license, he would save his money to buy parts from local electronic stores to build his own station. He had his own radio station in his room as a teenager. He went to Queens College, City College. So, you know, we're not talking about somebody that was wealthy, but he did not finish his degree. Ha, huh. neither did Bill Gates, neither did Steve Jobs, neither did Zuckerberg, but he went on to, in 1970, because again, this is Tech Tuesday, and it's just to show you, this is before uh, we we're talking about coding. He was the original. If you could figure out the, the inner workings of a thing, much like the woman that's in Hidden Figures that figured out how to program that IBM. Well, he was doing that with games and he developed all of these microprocessors and got into this whole gaming thing, working for the Fairchild Company. Uh, and then uh, he refined, he had a whole team. It's interesting. He had a whole team of people work with him on this cartridge. And one of the people uh, who came to work with him was a guy named Steve Wozniak. And he actually didn't hire Steve Wozniak because he said he wasn't up to, up to par. Hilarious. Steve Wozniak is a multi-billionaire now. Uh, I wonder if Gerald Lawson, maybe he wasn't. I don't know. Did Steve Wozniak take, mm, I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts right now. Uh, but while he was at Fairchild, Lawson and Ron Jones were the sole black people of the homebrew computer club. They, they created a homebrew complete computer club and a group of early computer hobbyists that included a number of industry leaders. Um, Steve Jobs was in there as well. And Lawson was, uh, again, he had interviewed Wozniak for this position at Fairchild, but decided, mm -mm, nope. Uh, Lawson left Fairchild and found, founded uh, Videosoft, which is a video game development company in 1980, which uh, made software for Atari 2600 in the early 1980s. As the 2600 had displaced the channel F, those of you who game, you know what I'm talking about. Videosoft closed about five years later and Lawson started to take on consulting work. At, at one point, he had been working with Stevie Wonder to produce a wonder clock that would make wake a child up with the sound of his parents' voice or her parents' voice, though it never made it to production. Uh, he was featured, I actually saw him in this uh, Netflix special on gaming called Atari Game Over, which is amazing. And he is our today, Tech Tuesday, history maker, Gerald Lawson. So that's that, 866-801-8255. And I wanted to bring somebody more modern in because a lot of us are gaming uh, and don't realize that, yeah, there was a black man that was one of the uh, brains behind what we are now that has developed into, uh, you know, something that is giving people scholarships to college. And it's a multi-million dollar business. Um, he was honored by Xbox Gaming as a hero. Uh, he got a hero award in the 21st Independent Games Festival in 2019, posthumously. He died actually in 2011, April 9th. And uh, there's a display of Lawson's contribution to the gaming industry on permanent display at the World Video Game Hall of Fame at the Strong National Museum of Play in Rochester, New York. Around 2003, he started having complications from diabetes, losing uh, the use of one leg and the sight in one eye. And uh, a month after being honored by the International Game Developers Association, he died of complications from diabetes. At the time of his death, he lived in Santa Clara, California, and he's survived by his wife and two children and a brother. And his children are featured in the Atari game over talking about his, his accomplishments, which I appreciate. So there's that.